Hi, my name is Alice with Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about when to use a task versus a story. It might not be so obvious, but today I'm going to give you everything you need to know in order to make the right selection. Hey everyone, I have a simple question for everyone. How do you ensure that your dev tickets don't stall if someone is on leave? Resolution has a simple answer. Just install their out of office assistant and make sure that those tickets are automatically reassigned. It's super easy, but for some reason, many people don't know about this app. Make sure you click on the link in the description below for a 20% discount. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section down below. All right, so this one's gonna be a little bit more of me just talking with you rather than showing you. But let's start off with defining what is a story. So a user story, as commonly known in Agile, well, Jira just calls it a story. And the story should be an item that your team is working on. These are the only things that can actually be planned into a sprint because Jira is going to ignore epics. And if you're in a company managed Scrum project, which is the project you want to be using, subtasks are not going to be visible in your backlog either. So the story is really the main issue type that you're going to want to use when you're trying to capture the work that you and your team are responsible for delivering. Now, one very, very key note here is the story should be a value added item. That means that when your team works on that story, your company, your business is going to be able to sell it potentially and make money, revenue, profits, right? Because when you do this, then you actually have a company at that point, right? And so think of your stories as things tasking, I'm trying to generalize the word tasking here, but as effort that it requires your developers to provide something of value. More likely, most of the time, those stories, if you're a software shop, are going to have branches and commits and pull requests against them. So think of anything that really requires some code or something, again, of value to the business, to your company, to your customer. Those should be stories. Are you assigning issues to people on PTO? Without a vacation calendar inside of Jira, your tickets can stall out for weeks. Don't let your Agile delivery stall because somebody's on PTO. Resolution has the perfect solution for Agile teams of all sizes with their out of office assistant app for Jira. Fix your current workflows by appointing backup owners and ensure throughput doesn't stall when team members are away on vacation or holiday. Check out the out of office assistant in the Atlassian Marketplace and get a 20% discount with the code in the description below. On the flip side, because of the way Atlassian works, they don't do things the way Agile defines these. So if you're familiar with the traditional Agile model, you have an epic, then you have a user story down below as a child, and then you have a task as a child of a user story. But Jira doesn't work like that. In fact, a story and a task are not parent and child, but rather siblings. They're at the exact same hierarchy level. So that presents us with the question of, then what do I do with the task? Because now we know what to do with the story. But the task is kind of in this limbo state. Well, the task is super, super simple to define. The task is very similar to the story. It's going to define what needs to be done, something that needs to be done or executed on some sort of effort that your team is going to have to put into. But one significant difference, and that is your task is necessary work, no value added to the business. But let me make a clear distinction. The task is valuable to the team. So while the business might not make money off of it, the business is not going to make revenue or profits or the, the end that task, the output of that task might not be shipped out to your customers. The team itself, that scrum team that is working on all of these other stories, they're going to get tremendous benefit from that task. And so think of these tasks as like, 
AWS things or IT type of things where you're setting up a Docker or some sort of Kubernetes or you're setting up a new repo or you're setting up a new branch or something, right? Like these are necessary evils valuable to the team because if the team doesn't have a repo to work on a project, then you're not gonna go anywhere very quickly. And so these are tasks that need to be done they don't typically have code against them, so you typically won't see a new branch or a commit or something like that, but there are gonna be things that the team needs to work on that are, again, valuable to them, but not necessarily valuable to the business. Versus on the story side, every story is valuable to the business and valuable to the team. And so that's kind of the key distinction. But that does leave us with the question of, well, if Agile defines our epics, user stories, and tasks, and you said that tasks in Jira are parallel, they're, they're siblings to the story, then how do I get that task from Agile? Why? Well, this is where Atlassian utilizes the subtask. So the subtask in Jira is going to be the equivalent of an Agile task. And so your subtasks, those are gonna always have to be attached to either a story or a task or a bug for that matter. And these subtasks describe how to do the work. Now, unfortunately, the way Jira works is it doesn't show a whole lot of love for your subtasks. Your subtasks are actually kind of hidden and you don't actually get to see the subtasks until you actually start your sprint and they show up on the board. And even then, you do need to go to your board settings in Jira and make sure that your subtasks are gonna be displayed appropriately nestled underneath your tasks or your stories or your bugs. And so for that reason, they don't, they're not really the best thing to use, at least with respect to how Jira uses them. But a lot of teams still love them. They're the smallest unit of hierarchy that you can go inside of Jira. And the way I usually describe subtasks to teams is you should use your subtasks to, again, show how to do the story, the task, or the bug. But they're really more like a checklist. They're really more for almost like a personal to-do list for that developer so that they know what they're supposed to do. And as an added bonus, you can also assign subtasks to different members of your team. So then if a story has like a multifaceted item to it, where you have to do two or three different things by two or three different people, you can still use a subtask. But keep in mind that reporting at that level starts to get very, very complex because while you can roll up the story points up to the story, and you can roll up like the, your estimated hours and time tracking up to the story as well, it starts getting a little bit more involved. So I always recommend to, for teams to not avoid the subtasks, but minimize their usage of subtasks and rely on smaller stories and tasks and bugs to really get give the team the traction that they need and the information that they need and the assignments that need to happen so that everybody is clear on what is expected of them. And so that's kind of it. So just to kind of summarize, right, your story is going to be front and center. That's usually what you're using almost all the time. And this is going to be something that needs to be built by the team. The story describes what needs to be built. And it is business value added and team value added. The task, on the other hand, is something that is still going to define what needs to be done by your team, but it's only team value value added. The business is not going to get any value out of that task being completed. Now, I do also want to offer this up, stir a little bit, throw this into the pot here and cause a little stir, be a little polarizing. But another way to think of your tasks, if you're like basically telling me, well, everything's a business value added. Well, consider then using your tasks to track technical debt. Because we've all been in these situations, especially when you're writing code, where you might just do something good enough to get it out the door, but you know you're going to have to refactor it later. And if you use the task as your technical debt, when you're planning your sprint, the insights in your sprint gives you an issue type breakdown. And so you can see how many stories, new features are being built by your team. And then you can see how many tasks, technical debt, is also being handled by your team. And as an added bonus, you can also see how many bugs are being handled by your team in any given sprint. So you can see that distribution and see if you're getting the right distribution for a healthy team. Now, this is all my advice. This is just typically how I coach teams. So if you like it, make sure you drop a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe as well because 
I have hundreds and hundreds of videos like this. If you've ever assigned debt issues to someone who is on vacation, remember that the out of office assistant for Jira is there for you and it is incredibly easy to set up and use. It has integrations with Slack and Tempo and you can connect to Outlook or Google Calendar using Zapier. So you don't even have to maintain any dates, super easy to use. Try it out today and get 20% off by using the promo code in the description down below. I bet it won't disappoint you. And if you've made it this far and you're not a subscriber of the channel, I recommend that you consider subscribing, smash the subscribe button down below and become a fan of the channel. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out the link in the description so you can check out all the different things that I am involved in. I want to take a special note and tell you that the Jura guy and I have officially launched the Jura Life. It is a cool brand new podcast, way different than these type of videos but it allows us to build a community. So if you want to be part of a thriving community, a brand new community in the world of Atlassian, and you want to be just something part of something awesome, then I recommend you check out the link in the description down below. Go over to the Jira Life, subscribe, and become one of our super fans. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need